Yeah, I confess, Father, I confess. Cause I've been living wrong. I know... Hello and welcome back to the Wandering Wind. Today, our lesson is going to be on greed. Now, greed, what is greed? Well, the um, standard definition that many know is that greed is the unhealthy desire for money or wealth. And wealth can be translated into financial wealth, social wealth, um, status, whatever it may be. But it's the unhealthy and ungodly desire for wealth. Now, this manifests itself in many forms, and the root of this always comes back to fear. The fear that you won't have enough down the line. The fear that you won't be able to pay your bills on time, or pay your bills at all. The fear that you won't be able to provide for your family. And so fear drives greed. And so we greedily lap up every single cent we can save. We greedily hold back at the collection plate or at the altar when it comes to what we give to the church or what we give to the needy or what we give to the poor. We hold back when it comes to our children because we really just don't feel we can afford it. What is the antithesis of greed? Generosity. Generosity or charity in its purest form is the ability to give without ceasing no matter where the money is coming from and the faith that that lets you know that no matter what, as long as you keep giving, there will always be a way. God makes that way, to be honest. But a faithful giving and a faithful outpouring of giving in a heart of servitude, a heart of a servant's heart. And how can we be more giving and less greedy? Well, it's not just about money. You can donate money, yes, but you can also donate your time. Go talk to someone at an old folks home. Just take an hour or two out of your day and go visit people that probably haven't seen a visitor in years or at least in months. I know a lot I know a lot of the old of the elderly that live in the old folks home around my area probably don't have visitors very often because their families stuck them there and just left or left them there. Um, go to a, a uh, <clears throat> go to a soup kitchen or a food bank and help out. Donate your time by going and visiting your parents. You may not think that you can afford the time, but go anyway. They probably miss you. Donate your possessions. Hey, do you have an old computer that hasn't seen use in years? But you have a neighbor that really could use something to find a job with? Donate it to them. Or if you've got um, old books... Donate them to the local library. They could probably use some more literature or something. Or if you've got equipment like construction stuff, donate, donate it to someone who's rebuilding their house or remodeling. You can never tell what you're able to donate. Donate a, donate a ride. If someone needs a ride to and from work, Offer to be that person. No charge. Just helping out where you need to. That is the greatest way I know to, con to conquer greed. Because greed is all-encompassing. Greed is something that just drives you to continue to want and want and want. And you know... I'm reminded of the uh, mythologies of dragons, how they guard their horde with a very 
jealous kind of rage whenever someone steps into their cave to try and take from their hoard. And a lot of times people that try and steal from a dragon's hoard end up dead because everyone knows not to touch the, the horde of a dragon. Um, but why is that? It's because dragons themselves are creatures of greed. And this mythos, this mythology, this bit of mythological fact, I say that loosely, is based on who the dragon is characterized after. And that is Satan. Satan is the ultimate archetype of greed. In fact, you could say that Satan is the ultimate archetype of every single one of the seven sins. He was lusting after God's job. He was greedy as, as he wanted more and more of the universe than what even God possessed. And God possesses everything, so he wanted more than that. He was wrathful against those that opposed him. You know... But, to be honest, the old serpent's already lost. And so now the only, the only enemy we have left to face, with God's help, of course, is our own sinful nature. And that, compared to Satan, that's piecemeal. Although even Satan was a cakewalk for God, because all he had to do was die and then come back. It's like, oh, by the way, I died for my people. And I came back. So you know what? The check has been paid and cleared. <laughs> and you know what? Not a day goes by for me when I don't think of how blessed I am to serve such a generous God who forgives me every single day for everything I do. I still pray to him. I still confess my sins. And in fact, I use the Acts prayer method a lot, um, which is adoration, confession, um, A-C-T-S. Adoration, confession, mm something else and then supplication but I use the Acts prayer method a lot and my confessions they they do so much they make it lighter on me because now I know that yes I know who I am and I know that I'm not perfect and I think we all need reminding of that more than once in a while because when we get a swelled head, we like to think we're the. We like to think that our stuff don't stink. We like to think that we're the bee's knees, the the cat's meow, the greatest thing since sliced bread. Whatever the heck you might wanna use as a euphemism, but we like to say we like to think that we're greater than we actually are. And so, getting a swelled head is horrible for our image. But it is great when God can bring us back down to earth because that shows us just how little we are and just how much greater he is. We serve a risen Savior. We, say, we serve a God on high. And he owns everything. So whenever you think about becoming greedy over something you think you want, just remember, it's not yours. It's not even the other person's or whatever bank or whatever may own it. It's God's. God owns everything you see, everything you touch, everything you taste, everything you feel, everything you hear, everything you smell. It is all God's property. God owns everything. So don't think that you, for a moment, have a right to claim ownership of anything. Because God will show you in a moment just how wrong you were. 
He may not do it dramatically. He may do it in such a way that it's very sly and very subtle. My God's a tricky one he is at times. <laughs> uh, I've had a few moments where it's been like, ah, I see what you did, Lord. You're teaching me a lesson, I know. <laughs> he, he's done that to me more times than I can count. But every time I've learned something new, every time I have become a better person for it. And God knows, God knows more than anything just how wonderful our lives can be with him and just how dreadful they are without him. <sighs> so what's the application? Go out and give. Go out and be generous. You don't have to do it with your money, although it is recommended that you tithe at least 10% of your earnings. Being a good little Christian now. But that's not a prerequisite for salvation. That's just something that um, comes naturally as the Spirit changes you. Um, another thing is, when you can do so, um, give back. Forgive a debt. Give back something that you borrowed or that you were given that you really don't need anymore. Or find a way to, to just spend time with someone that you haven't in years. Be generous today and you will be happy tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a blessed day. I love you guys so very much. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Also, if you could do so, if you could help me out, I am working towards a 50 patron goal on Patreon. And so you can either check the link up in the description, I mean down in the description, or up in the eye, and see about becoming my patron. I'm working my way to 50 by the end of the year, and I will be giving away something awesome for hitting that goal and hey if we can get to more i might throw in more stuff too anyway thank you guys so much for being such a great audience and such a great influence on my heart i love you very much have a great one